I'm going to share with you a reflection on interior life and I'm going to start with a reading where the Spirit leads us to read. Uh, I'm going to read from John 6, 60, from verse 60 on. Will you also go away? After hearing this, many of Jesus' followers said, This sort of teaching is very hard. Who can accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were murmuring about this, and so he said to them, Does this offend you? Then how would you react when you see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh cannot help. The words that I have spoken to you are a Spirit, and they are life. But among you there are some who do not believe. From the beginning Jesus knew who will betray him. So he added, As I have told you, no one can come to me unless it is given to him by the Father. After this many disciples withdrew and no longer followed him. Jesus asked the twelve, Will you also go away? Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We now believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus said to them, I chose you, the twelve, did, did I not? Yet one of you is a devil. Jesus spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. He, one of the twelve, was to betray him. It's very clear when we speak about interior life that we speak about a spirit because uh, we all have experienced uh, exterior, external faith, which, is me, which means religiosity, just plain religion like the Pharisees, to know the law, to be a good theologian, to have, to have a structured doctrine. We know many Catholics like that, and sometimes some of us have been like that before, and uh, we can call that an empty religion, because there's no spirit there, which was what was lacking f uh, from these people that walked away from Jesus when he spoke about those mysteries, about eating his body, drinking his blood. For them that was too much. They couldn't get it because they couldn't go within. You know, they, they were not internal in their faith. They were all external. <clears throat> and there was no way they could get it because there was no spirit there in their hearts. So today, we are confronted with uh, serious uh, situations in this life because of all the events in the world, the pandemia and all the consequences of the pandemia <clears throat> show us how important it is to really challenge ourselves to find out how much of an inner life do we have, inner life. Because maybe in our interior, uh, we do not have a life. And therefore, we are empty, we are alone. We have loneliness in the heart. And we don't know where to cling from. Because everything we are about is external. And when you are secluded and limited, the way we have been lately for a while, you begin to feel uneasy, empty, lonely, and desperate. And perhaps you feel like that. You don't feel like you have a life because the life that you know is all external and is all detained. You know, it's, it was brought into a stop and it's not moving. And, and when it begins to move, it moves very slowly. You know, how they are reactivating our regular life when they are very slowly 
and very limited and with all kinds of protocols and so it's a different world not the world we are used to to live in and it's going to be hard to look at the future because it doesn't look like even we have a future and the future we have is very bleak you don't need a prophet to tell you that we know it so in order for us to survive as children of God we need to look inside and see what is there is there anything in there are you able to survive on our own because we do have the Spirit of God in us is that what we are we have to be very sincere and open to this truth because we could easily think that we are fine just because we pray, just because we believe, just because we know the law, just because we are very well versed in theology. And this could last some time. This could hold you a little bit, but there's going to come a moment when that is not enough. It, won't not, it will not suffice. You will need spirit you will need an inner life. How do you go about getting an inner life? I tell you, there are many uh, teachings and uh, some of them are very sophisticated. I know about very uh, sophisticated worships where they teach people how to think, how to pray, how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to think about heaven, how to do, do this and do that in relationship to our faith. And people come out of those retreats all enlightened and then the light goes away because it doesn't work with them. Because you cannot teach inner life. There's no way you could teach that. Inner life has to do with love. It's God in you. That's inner life. Inner life is the Spirit of God in you. I cannot teach you how to bring the Spirit of God in your heart. There's no teaching about that. I cannot teach you how to love. The only way to learn how to love is to be of God. And who can teach you that? You have to be the one that decide to be of God because that depends on your will. You have to decide that. It's like when you have a friend. You think the friend can teach you how to love him and how to be faithful to him? No. You have to decide that. You have to do that yourself. You have to decide to love that friend, to be faithful to that friend, and to feel that friendship in you, in your heart. And that is not different when we talk about God, the Spirit of God in us. It's something we have to do. So that's why we have to be real about what we're doing in relationship to our inner life. Our inner life is God in us, the Spirit of God in us. That's what inner life is all about. And that no one can teach. You will not find a worship that will lead you to that. And if there are, they lie to you. Because only you can do that walk. To walk within you, only you can do it. So let's do it. Because otherwise, you don't want to be in an empty life in such a troubling world.